Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another New Jersey Constitutional Republicans virtual conversation. A great pleasure and honor for me to have uh, my good friend and uh, dear brother, patriot, Mark Cheeseman. Mark is one of our first New Jersey Constitutional Republican members. And I remember Mark when uh, we had a meeting early on in 2017, and you and I were the only that ones at that meeting. You and I, that was it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so, so we've come a long way, and Mark's been with us from the beginning. And uh, as you, many of you know, um, Mark is a one of the top leaders in the state of New Jersey, uh, defending our Second Amendment rights. And uh, we all know that those rights have been infringed upon for many decades now. And Mark, uh, talk to us about what occurred this week. Give us a little bit of information for those who may not know of the Supreme Court case uh, that you had before the court. So have All right, Jay. Um, thanks for having me on again. It's good to be with you again, uh, even though we're virtual. Um, that works for me, I guess. Uh, all right. Well, what we saw this week uh, were 10 Second Amendment cases of uh, 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 it was called a cafe style smorgasbord type of uh, cases. There, there were a number of different care cases. There were some carry cases, permit cases, uh, a micro stamping case, uh, magazine ban case uh, that the court could choose from. Uh, the majority of them were uh, right to carry cases. Uh, you had a case out of Maryland, three out of New Jersey. Uh, and another one out of Massachusetts, uh, all 10 were just completely wiped off the slate, all denied a hearing, were denied certiorari. Um, needless to say, I think that everybody involved in all those cases were uh, shocked and surprised that all 10 were, were wiped off. I knew I had a 50-50 chance going into it. Uh, a lot of us knew we had a 50-50 chance going into it. Um, but to take all 10 and completely wipe all 10, 10 off the, the slate uh, and not even bother hearing them uh, is, I think we have a, a very serious problem, A, in the Supreme Court and B, in the country as a whole right now, as far as the Second Amendment goes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, you, you need to remember that the New York State and rifle uh, pistol case was also heard, but never really, uh, they didn't really give any clear ruling on it one way or another. They, they could have done a lot more with that case, uh, the case out of New York, but they chose not to. Um, and if you go back and you look at the dissents from that, uh, and this is a New York State Rifle and Pistol uh, Club case, where you'll see Alito dissents on this, but Gorsuch also joins him in the dissent, and Kavanaugh joins him in the dissent. And if you look at the Rogers dissent, you can see where Thomas is also dissenting very strong on that. Um, so you have a, a pretty good indication that there's a problem within the Supreme Court and the Second Amendment. You have a, a, a few judges who are pretty adamant about wanting to hear a Second Amendment case. And, and two of them are Trump picks, all right? Kavanaugh and Gorsuch both believe it's time to hear a Second Amendment case. And, and you can see that in the dissents from the New York case. And you can see that again uh, in the uh, dissent from the Rogers case, which is um, was in the group of the, uh, the 10 it was denied. Um, Mark, Mark, uh, let me read a little bit of background for those people who, who are not familiar as much as we are with, with what happened. And what I'll do is I'm going to read exactly from what uh, Justice Clarence Thomas wrote in the dissent in the case you're talking about, which is Roger V. Gruel, which all the other cases, your case, Cheeseman versus Palillo was all mixed into. 
But just let me read a couple of quotes that he said. He said, first of all, quote, this is Clarence Thomas said, the text of the Second Amendment protects the right of the people to keep and bear arms. We've stated that this fundamental right is necessary, quote, to our system of ordered liberty, as was written in McDonald v. Chicago in 2010. Yet in several jurisdictions throughout the country, being New Jersey one, law-abiding citizens have been barred from exercising the fundamental right to bear arms because they cannot show that they have a, quote, justifiable need or, quote, a good reason for doing so. One would think that such an onious burden on a fundamental right would warrant this court's review. And he also went on to say, which is very interesting, Mark, is the fact that he said that, quote, this case gives us the opportunity to provide guidance on the proper approach for evaluating Second Amendment claims, acknowledge that the Second Amendment protects the right to carry in public and resolve a square circuit split on the constitutionality of justifiable need restrictions on that right. I, Clarence Thomas, grant petition for a writ of Saturiari. Right, Saturi he's absolutely right. No, he, he's absolutely right. And if you look at Thomas's dissent, he's he's dissenting, but he's also, if you if you read very closely what he's saying here, he, he's speaking to the people. He, he's speaking to me in this. Uh, he, he's kind of saying, "Look, here's what happened, and here's what you may want to do. Here's mm -hmm. how you may want to handle this." And you, you see it in the in the New York State and rifle pistol case dissent too, where, where the judges are, are kind of telling you, all right, yeah, we're dissenting on this, but here is where we are, and here's where maybe you need to start going and looking and changing gears and start thinking about what you're going to do from here. Because I, to me, very good. What, what I'm seeing here, th these guys are ready to hear a case. They, they want to settle mm -hmm. this. All right. Uh, there is no doubt in my mind, and a number of people have said this, and I believe them, and I'm also of the same opinion, that th this this problem lies squarely at the feet of Justice Roberts. There's no doubt mm -hmm. in my mind. No question. Nope. He's a swing vote. No question. All right. Uh, you know, we could talk about the DACA decision a little bit, uh, and we could see it again there. Uh, he wasn't very helpful in the New York rifle and pistol case, even though he, you know, it got granted, but he wasn't very helpful in it. Um, but to just take all 10 cases and completely wipe them off the board like they never existed is a very serious issue. And people yes. have said that uh, Roberts doesn't want controversy or he doesn't want to be too uh, leaning one way or the other or whatever. Uh, the, these 10 cases weren't really that controversial. Not at all. There was no, no. controversy in these cases, really. They were pretty cut and dry. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you did, the justifiable need is wrong. Good cause is wrong. Good reason is wrong. Right. Uh, there's really no controversy there. What ha what, what he did do is they opened up the door for more gun control. Yes. Sadly. All right. Because all, all your gun control advocates out there are going to think that this is a green light to go ahead and uh, start pushing more gun control. And I would imagine in the near future, we're going to see more gun control getting pushed in some of the state legislatures, probably New Jersey. Mm -hmm. uh, although New Jersey seems to be a little bit tied up with uh, the COVID-19 issue and getting the economy back and uh, reopening or not reopening or whatever it is they're thinking right now. But I think that right. once this COVID-19 thing's over, they're probably going to start hammering us with more gun control here. So what recourse do we have? Really, the only recourse that I see that we have would be to probably start over at square one. You would need to start a brand new case, run it through county court, run it through New Jersey appeals court. And I think there's probably some other groups and organizations thinking the same thing is uh, maybe we roll the dice in the third circuit and see where we end up there. 
Mm -hmm. you're probably looking at about another five, six months before we get to that point, maybe even a year, maybe less. I don't know. Uh, maybe take a shot at the third circuit. Now, the third circuit's only going to solve New Jersey. It's not going to help anybody else, where if the Supreme Court would have ruled on my case or the Rogers case, or even the Maryland case, or the Gould case, that would have helped out a number of states. Let's say that they heard my case and my case one, that would have helped Hawaii out, it would have helped Maryland out, uh, it would have probably helped New York out and a number of other states uh, that are also under duress as far as good reason and good cause and all that. And it would have definitely helped out. Where the Third Circuit Court, you're kind of isolated where it's just going to help out that that area. Mm -hmm. But since I live in New Jersey and uh, my main focus is on New Jersey, then I'm, I'm willing to uh, start from scratch and, uh, you know, take a 50-50 chance in a third circuit and see what happens. All right. I thought it was interesting, too, uh, Mark, that uh, Justice Thomas talked about that since the Heller uh, ruling 10 years ago, there's been a lot of controversy in the lower courts and there's been some confusion because Heller didn't spell out uh, what what uh, Kerry would look like, essentially. Uh, but what he said I thought was interesting was, and this shows the, the confrontation and thinking uh, in the courts and this tier system that Thomas talks about. He says, on that basis, the tier system, we expi explicitly rejected the invitation to evaluate Second Amendment challenges under, quote, an interest balancing inquiry with the interests protected by the Second Amendment on one side and the governmental public safety concerns on the other. And the courts have taken the governmental public safety concerns to another, uh, to, to, for, for the public safety to the point where they have violated the Second Amendment rights, clearly identified in Heller and should have been with your case and the rest of the gun, the rest of the Second Amendment cases. When she said, "Yeah, the, pub, the public safety argument um, is brought up all the time. Uh, it's almost the copy and paste argument you get from New Jersey and a lot of other states. Uh, actually, if you go back and you read Judge Hardiman's dissent in Drake versus Philco um, from 2013, Hardiman talks about that. Uh, that the." Uh, Public safety issue is really a non-issue. Uh, presumptively lawful is uh, something that Heller already threw out. Case-by-case uh, -case determinations was thrown out by Heller. So uh, the problem is New Jersey doesn't pay attention to what Heller said. New Jersey doesn't pay attention right. to what McDonald. Uh, New Jersey's pretty adamant that uh, Heller was in uh, an in-the-home case, and that's it. But New Jersey never takes a look at McDonald or, or any of the other cases. They, they just say, you know, that, that, that's it. Uh, Heller was an in the home. You can have your gun in the home, but you can't take it out of the home. But then they kind of contradict themselves and they say, well, you can apply for a permit. Ah, you, you won't get it as long as you can show uh, uh, necessity and, and justifiable need and all the above, uh, you might get it. No, no, Heller, Heller, Heller threw all that out. And we, yeah. we said that in our case, we, we gave them an awful lot of information in our case that was never before presented to the court. Yes. And yes, my case and a number of other cases were actually up for conference seven times. Uh, this July yes. 2nd would have been a year that my case mm -hmm. sat in Supreme Court. I have a total of four years altogether. Yep. Uh, that now is just uh, washed away. I mean, the day I saw this, I probably spent about five minutes being depressed, another 10 minutes being angry. And then I said, all right, well, now what? You uh, know, you, you got to right. re retool, rethink. What are you going to do next? What can we do next? Uh, I've been in contact yes. with Jason Hector. We've been talking some. Uh, we're going to formulate a plan. We're going to come up with some kind of a, uh, a new angle, a way to go on this. But we don't believe right. we're dead in the world right now. No, we're, we're for those of uh, no, for those of uh, our audience who don't know Jay Factor, Jay Factor uh, worked uh, 
hand in hand, hand, hand with Mark and his attorney, David Jensen, right, Mark? And uh, but Jay Factor is a, is a great scholar, constitutional scholar. He can he reads legalese as good as anyone I've ever met. Um, he's an he's a he's an historian. Um, he's really and I'm and and there's no question that this case, Cheeseman versus Palolo, from the Cheeseman side was well put together, and I'm sure got the attention of the judges that read it, and were they were very impressed with the way this case was played out. So there's no question that the, this case uh, was really well put together, Mark. And I just wanted to read for you uh, what after this decision was made not to grant uh, Saturiari. New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy and Attorney General Gruber Gruwell said in a joint statement, quote, as we've said all along, New Jersey's law limiting public carrying weapons protects our residents and makes our communities safer. We are thrilled that the United States Supreme Court has allowed our law, like other public carry laws across the nation, to remain in place. So, of course, the left is claiming victory over this. And one of the reasons that uh, we're having this conversation today, Mark, uh, is to let our audience know that we're you're not giving up J Factor. All Second Amendment warriors throughout the state are not giving up. From the constitutional uh, Republican perspective uh, side, we are going to hold elected representatives accountable to defending the Second Amendment, to defending, uh, to, to getting rid of justifiable need, which is unconstitutional and uh, supporting uh, giving the right to carry back to the people of the state of New Jersey. Republicans are all gonna need to be unified in that respect. And then Republicans are gonna need to win elections to take majorities so that we can create legislation that rewards law-abiding gun owners, not further punish them with incremental infringements. Yeah, and, and Governor Murphy, uh, his fatal flaw in that statement is it's not a win. The court didn't rule on anything. He just denied to hear right. it. It's not a rule. There's a big difference. All right. That doesn't yes. mean that we can't bring this back up again, and we will bring it back up again, whether it be in a lower court or in the Supreme Court. So, yeah, he said, I mean, enjoy the ride for a little bit, Murphy, but guess what? It's probably not going to last forever. It's going to come back right. around. You know, Very good. I, that's he, what the people need to hear. Yeah, it's not a win. He can claim it's a win all yeah, for now it is. Go ahead. You know, all right, good for you. You think it's a win? No, I don't think it's a win. They didn't hear the cases. They right. denied they denied to hear them. They weren't heard. So we still have an open argument. We have an open argument that can be brought up again. We still have an argument. Which means you still have a chance and you still have a reason to continue to fight. Uh, of course it's gonna take time, money, and a lot of aggravation. But the aggravation side of it has been narrowed down a lot because as you go through something like this, you learn a lot. You compile a yes. lot of information. Um, you have a chance to step back and take a look at your information, see if it was flawed anywhere, mm -hmm. and redesign and rebuild and come up with a better case. And mm -hmm. it's my guess that there are some other groups right now that are doing this. Um, I don't know what ANJRPC is doing or Scott Bach is doing. I'm not, I, I don't know if he has any plans for anything. Uh, I know that historically when you don't hear from Bach, that pretty much means he may be up to something. Uh, mm -hmm. I hope he is. Uh, I'm thinking he might be. Um, but we certainly are going to be putting something together uh, and we're going to float it in county court. We're going to float it in appeals court. And then we're going to go to third circuit and see where we go. Uh, it's not exactly. going to be the identical. It's not going to be an identical argument, but it's definitely going to be uh, a combination of uh, old and new arguments. I mean, we have a whole new roadmap here from Thomas to, to take a look at. Yes. He, Giving us a roadmap. He so he speak. You know, he here's. This, he's speaking to us through his dissent. So you take yes. all these dissents together and you formulate a new argument. Not to mention the other information that we had in the petition to begin with was all brand new stuff. That still, we didn't go to uh, federal. We we went from New Jersey Supreme Court right into U.S. Supreme Court. We we did not go federal. 
where I believe Rogers did go federal. I may be wrong on that. But he may or he may not have. I'm not sure. But either way, our intentions are to go ahead and see if we can get something heard in uh, the Third Circuit federal court uh, mm -hmm. in the near future. And I thought, Mark, as you say, that uh, Thomas did give us uh, get a roadmap for success. And I thought it was interesting that he went through a whole historical analysis of the right to bear arms outside of your home that goes all the way back to the 14th century in English uh, common law. So, right. So that, uh, th that is an example of how Justice Thomas is helping uh, our calls. And I wanted to read another quote that he said, I thought this was the most, um, this was really the most memorable and notable quote as he said, quote, in his dissent that, this court would almost certainly review the constitutionality of a law requiring citizens to establish a justifiable need before exercising their free speech rights. And it seems highly unlikely that the court would allow a state to enforce a law requiring a woman to provide a justifiable need before seeking an abortion. But today, faced with a petition challenging just such a restriction on citizens' Second Amendment rights, the court simply looks the other way, unquote. Yes. I thought that was very yep. profound and uh, very, very uh, relevant, especially bringing in the, the abortion situation as well as free speech rights. So uh, I would say Thomas is a little upset. <laughs> For lack of a better word, I, I think that Thomas is a little upset. I think you see Alito's upset, Gordon is upset, and um, Kavanaugh is also upset that these cases aren't being heard. And if you look at this, again, the dissents from uh, the New York case and the Rogers case, it's, it's, it's very evident that these judges want to, uh, once and for all, answer the question of the Second Amendment. So it's up to us. Yes bring those cases forward they can't do that for us but it's up to us to read the writing on the wall uh and bring those cases up um now they also uh, thomas also mentions in here where they he says we've already provided guidance to the lower courts but nobody's right. listening so right with the, with heller you need to start listening we said this in heller we said this in mcdonald why mm -hmm. are you not listening mm -hmm. to what we said why do we have to babysit you? Uh, and this is a big problem. The lower courts, the U.S. Supreme Court is clogged up with, with, with all kinds of cases. It really should have been decided in the lower courts. It seems the lower courts can't seem mm -hmm. to do anything on their own these days where they right. should be deciding this. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think if the Supreme Court wasn't so clogged up with things, we may have landed in a better spot. Uh, I mean, I, I, another side of me thinks we had the perfect storm here. Uh, when these cases were in conference, we had the COVID-19 problem and then not long. Yes. And then we ran right into the riots and looting. Yes. And I'm watching this the riots and the looting and uh, the, the, the taking over out in uh, Seattle, Washington and all this. And I'm thinking, you know, I, I, these judges are probably going to wipe the slate clean with all this going on because they don't. Yeah. Or at least Roberts is going to wipe the slate clean because he right. doesn't want to get his hands dirty again. Yeah. You know, I, I, we just. We drew a short straw here. As far as time, there's no goes, question. I, right. I, and I, the other thing, Mark, is and the other thing, Mark, is we know that the Chief Justice Roberts has politicized this. He did it with Obamacare and ruling on the mandate years ago. Look at the two decisions that they made this week in relation to our, to this to our Second Amendment case, which should have been heard. And you see that along with the timing and with the pandemic and the upheaval that's occurred uh, during the for, to the riots. Um, no question that this court, the Supreme Court, and there's been historical precedent long ago that the uh, Supreme Court has been politicized. Uh, 
totally contrary to what the founders had envisioned and what John Marshall originally established for the court to be engaged in judicial review and nothing further. The court now today, Mark, acts like a legislature instead of a, uh, a court that's evaluating law in lieu and in light of the Constitution. Right, and even Justice Ginsburg stated in the New York Rifle and Pistol case, uh, she said that, you know, uh, we need to be careful that we don't legislate from the bench. Um, and she's, mm -hmm. she's aware of that. Um, if you listen to the audio transcripts in the New York uh, State Rifle and Pistol case, uh, Ginsburg's kind of upset that New the state of New York uh, hurried real quick and put a law in so that the U.S. Supreme Court couldn't rule on it. Uh, and she said, when did we start bowing to the legislatures? Uh, we are we should be talking about this. We should be ruling on this. Uh, just because they passed a law doesn't mean they're going to, that law is going to hold true in, in New York. So even Ginsburg was a little upset with the whole New York thing. Mm -hmm. How she felt about these other 10 cases, I don't know. Now, here's another thing, and, and I need to say this to the people. I get an mm -hmm. awful lot of questions, but the Supreme Court does not email you. Uh, the Supreme Court does not call you up. They do not give you a reason. Um, I did not. Re uh, my attorney knows as much as me. They did not email him and give him reasons why we do not know who voted for what. They do not disclose that information. We can assume it. All right. So we have to go based off assumptions. But what we do have is we have these dissents to look at. And you can see right. who dissented and who didn't. All right. So the answer, the answer is there. You just have to kind of really look for it. But they don't call you on the phone. They don't email you. And they don't say, hey, by the way, your case is denied. And here's why. And here's who voted for it and who didn't vote for it. I do not know that information. Uh, so it's all assumption at this point. Mm -hmm. Another argument that's been brought up is a lot of people are uh, – saying, well, Trump's picks were wrong. Well, maybe they, uh, some of Trump's picks may seem wrong in some other issues, but in the Second Amendment issue, I have a dissent here from Kavanaugh and Gorsuch regarding a Second Amendment case. So as far as Trump's picks, as far as Gorsuch and Kavanaugh goes, it seems to me that he did a good job picking these two with Second Amendment issues. Other issues, I don't know, but with the Second Amendment issue, I think we have a solid bunch here in the Supreme Court. It's just our problem again is is Roberts. Roberts. Everybody is laying this right at his feet. And there's no doubt in my mind that again Roberts is the one who just decided, all right, you know, we're not gonna hear any of them. Yeah, there's no question about it. Now, Mark, is there anything that uh, we can communicate to the people? Uh, to where we could get together or to where we could uh, participate or help in any way as, uh, as we move forward with the, uh, with trying to get our second amendment rights restored in New Jersey. Is there anything that uh, the people and the listeners and the audience can do to help as we move forward? Well, what do we have coming up? We have, uh, we're voting for, uh, we have a presidential vote coming up. So we, we, well, we need to vote. Uh, we have a congressional vote coming up. Right. So it's important to we, go out and vote. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these people primaries. are federal. Yeah, I mean, we're voting Congress, Senate, and all that. And But it's important to vote. Who you want to vote for, I don't know. It's up to you. I'm not going to tell anybody who I'm voting for because that's an argument all over the place. I'm not going to get into that. But at the end of the day, you do need to go out and vote. One thing I think we can all agree on is that Booker needs to go, and we need to replace Booker with somebody else. Who that is, I don't know. I'm not going to comment on that. But Booker does need to go. This will help us in, in federal, in the federal aspect of, of things as far as the Second Amendment mm -hmm. goes, because there are a lot of anti-gun laws in Congress right now that we can send representatives there to hopefully remember where they came from and the duress that we're under, and they need to vote accordingly when they get into Congress, whether it be the House or the Senate. 
You know, and right. I would say this to those running for those seats. The Second Amendment isn't about skeet shooting. The Second Amendment is not about target practice. The Second Amendment right. does extend outside of the home. So whoever does get into office, you would damn well better remember that. Yes. All right. Don't, it, it, it's very important that you remember that. So we all need to get out and vote. Uh, when's the next governor vote coming up? 21, 1921. Yeah, that'll be, or, that, uh, that'll be next, right. That'll be next year. The, the, we have the primaries that are due July 7th. So we want to make sure that we're supporting the strongest second amendment candidates that are out there. Um, yeah. In each of the uh, congressional districts, you want to evaluate your Republican candidates because they're the ones that are going to be Second Amendment, uh, looking to preserve the Second Amendment to a better, far better degree than the Democrats. And then uh, we're going to have assembly races uh, next year uh, or, or, uh, or as well and uh, state senatorial races. So you want to evaluate our candidates based on what they think of the Second Amendment and justifiable need. Are they for it or are they against it? If there are four justifiable right. needs, they're not, they're not for the Second Amendment. Because the Second Amendment says very clearly, very simply, that anybody could understand the right to keep and bear arms. Meaning, and Justice Thomas talked about this in his dissent, the right for you to carry your firearm outside of your home. So we can't compromise on this, and we have to stay determined and keep positive that, that we can restore our Second Amendment rights. Now, and on that note also, uh, J.R., um, I, I found that a lot of candidates are unaware of yes. the the carry laws. Uh, a lot of them are like justifiable. What what does that mean? Yeah, uh, right. and it, it's and it, this this doesn't make them any less of a good candidate. It just makes them an uneducated candidate. So it's yes, we so have too much of it. <laughs> We, we need to educate them. I mean, my, the, the, the New Jersey firearm laws are insane. Um, and for mm -hmm. anybody to be able to re remember them all and recite them all and, and keep them all in their head it is, is virtually impossible without walking around with a laptop computer at, at your fingertips all the time. So yes. people like me and some other people out there, uh, we, we need to engage with these people, sit down to them and have a rational conversation. And hey, by the way, uh, John Doe, do you, do you have any idea what justifiable need is? Well, no, I don't. All right, well, I'd like to talk to you about that. And I'd like to talk to you about why it's wrong um, and why it's unconstitutional. And hopefully when you get into office, uh, you'll be able to maybe look at some of the bills that are sitting in the legislature. We, we have a number of fantastic bills in our legislature um, that all want to take down justifiable need and give us our right to carry. Uh, I mean, my God, right. Parker Space has a lot of them. Uh, Hal Worth, uh, Jay Weber. Um, these guys have wrote some phenomenal bills. Uh, Michael Patrick Carroll, uh, who I don't believe is part of, um, I think he uh, retired, but he did something called the yeah. Citizens Protection Act, which was, I, I love that. Uh, and I think mm -hmm. uh, Parker Base actually reintroduced it again. Uh, that should have a very hard look. The, the Citizens Protection Act should have a very hard look by who, whatever mm -hmm. person is going to be running from governor. They need to take a hard look at that because he's got everything listed in there from mm -hmm. our permitting system to magazines to uh, uh, assault rifles to not assault rifles to the permitting scheme. So these people need to be educated or educate themselves. And I, it's up to us to do that. Right. So and Mark, uh, before those, we all those before things would be beneficial. Very good. I wanted to, uh, before we uh, wrap up the show, Mark, I wanted to get your opinion on uh, the National Reciprocity Act that had passed uh, several years ago in the Congress, uh, came to the Senate, died there, and then the current administration was actually uh, adversarial to it. What are your thoughts on that? Well, the Senate passed it. Uh, no, the, the, how did that go? Uh, Congress. That. Yeah, the Congress passed the House. The House of Representatives passed it. It went to McConnell okay. and it died. And it was national right. reciprocity. H you H remember. HR thirty. HR thirty-eight. It was. Yeah. Um, there were right. two versions of it. There, one one version would have helped New Jersey out, and the other version would have done absolutely nothing for New Jersey. 
And I can't mm-hmm. remember which one was what, but I do. All right, let's let's just say the HR 38 that would have helped New Jersey was very good. Um. So, what was your original question on that? Now, well, it 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 seemed as though the current administration was uh, didn't support uh, HR 38, and it of course would have helped New Jersey out greatly in regards to uh, reciprocity between the states. Now, the, the point that I want to try to bring out is how important it is that we get control back of the House of Representatives under Republican control so that we can come up with another HR 38, if you will, or to try to get national reciprocity through again with a Republican-controlled Senate and House of Representatives. It was devastating well, for the Republican Party to lose the House of Representatives in 2018, and it shouldn't yeah. occur. And we, we have to win the House back. That's important. Yeah, no, in, in regardless of the Second Amendment or not, it's very important that we take the House back no matter what at all costs. Right. Uh, whether I'm talking about H.R. 38 or not, I mean, to me, H.R. 38, to me, looked like lip service uh, that was put out by Congress. I don't ever think they intended on having it go anywhere. But mm-hmm. we do need to take back the House, and we need to hold on to the Senate. Uh, should they bring it up again? Yeah, why not? Uh, it'll save a lot of aggravation for a lot of people. Um, another question that comes up is, why isn't Trump passing an executive order for reciprocity? Right. All right Trump will be Trump will be a fool to pass an executive order on reciprocity because if Trump gets voted out and a new president comes in, that president can rescind that executive order. Right. That's yes. why Trump's not yeah. doing that. And mm-hmm. Trump's no fool. He knows damn right well that if he were to pass an executive order on the Second Amendment uh, on reciprocity, that a future president could pull it right out from underneath of us, and then we could all become felons overnight. Yeah. And of course, there's constitutional, uh, there's constitutional considerations with executive orders to begin with. Uh, yeah. You know, Originally, they were intended just to uh, to be to be applicable to those who served within the, his admin- the, the president's administration, not uh, not as a not acting as law, um, adding or taking on another responsibility that's clearly enumerated to the Congress and the House of Representatives right. and the Senate. But Mark, uh, I hope you come back. Come, please come back uh, to, uh, to another conversation with us soon and give us an update on what's occurring as uh, we move forward and as, uh, as, you, as you strengthen the case um, even further and uh, and let everyone know uh, what we can do to help but I want to I want you to sure. come back with us soon and give us an update because there's a lot of people that are very frustrated as we all were this this week very disappointed oh, we had hope with the kicking of the can down the road with you know being being granted another opportunity to be heard that it would finally go through but like we said, uh, politically, uh, the political, the, the times that we live in now, it wasn't politically expedient. Maybe that's the way Justice Roberts thinks. It's unjust to think that way. The case should have been heard, as uh, Thomas clearly indicated. But I hope you'll come back with us soon and any other parting remarks you'd like to make. I certainly will, JR. Thank you. Um, do you have any idea what, at what time you're going to be having uh, meetings where we can all get together? in the yes. same room again yes we're going to be doing that as soon as uh, we're able to work out we've been meeting at the ramada Inn on route 55 and uh, La- landis avenue and violin we've had uh, some great participation okay. uh, we've had a lot of people of course the whole pandemic uh, shot all that down so we have to be right. able to make sure because we've had 80 to 100 people uh, at the meetings we have to be able to make sure that we're able to have that many participate but as soon as uh, i get the information and the okay from the ramada and in violent then we'll schedule another meeting and of course we want to have a second amendment uh, feature and focus night uh which we have yeah. every year which you've always been a part of and we want to have jay factor come down and uh and yeah. Teresa inacker and, and rosie uh Ro- and uh all of the second amendment champions but it'd be nice to have calandro come down this year and uh, no, I, and, uh I, mean, I, miss, I miss having a beer and eating dinner and shaking hands and talking to people. Uh, it's yes, this Zoom telephone thing. I, I, I'm just not <laughs> built. <for it. laughs> 
it's weird, but right. it works. So do what we have right. to do. Well, hopefully, we we'll get into July or August. I don't know. Yeah, I'm. Uh, we're we're gonna try to shoot for July, Mark. But as soon as I get some information, I'll make sure you and all the other uh, JCR members and all of our citizens get the information when we're beginning together. But I certainly appreciate you coming on the show, Mark. And, uh, all right, Jr. Thanks for having me. Th thank you very much, and and feel free, the audience out there, feel free to share this video, give people some encouragement. Uh, that uh, our Second Amendment rights, we're not going to give up on them, and we're going to continue no. to fight for, for liberty and justice for all. So thank you very much, and we'll see you again. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. Thanks. Thank you, Mark.